will be very helpful for you uh, to wrap up all the things uh, like the characteristics for the discrete signal. So before starting that, so if you have any question from the last lecture, you can you can you are welcome to ask for the clarification if necessary, or you can also ask me after after the end of the lecture as well. And during the lecture, I have asked some question and that those are actually followed by the answer. So if you want to participate, please raise, raise your hand. So let me start the session. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. We are discussing on the properties of the discrete signals. As I have stated before that, this is very important to understand each and every part of it uh, very precisely. We are starting, always we start with the actual analog signal, then we uh, move to the uh, discrete signal or you can say the digital signal. And then from the digital signal processing, after having the processing, we need to come back to our original signal or we can say again to the analog domain. So that is why uh, this is uh, very important for us to, to know about the transformations and, we, and how those transformations actually been done. So, uh, in the second characteristics, uh, we have stated in the last day, we have stated basically two of the characteristics. Number two, that is a discrete time sinusoids uh, whose frequencies are separated by an integer multiplied of twice pi are identical. I believe that I have talked uh, much on this and you have that idea uh, what does it mean? We have two things in the frequency and domain in the discrete part. One is omega and another is small f. Capital uh, small omega is equals to twice pi f, where f is equals to f by fs. And these are the two very important uh, part of the discrete domain. And uh, from the relation, we can we, we, we have already shown that <clears throat> the identical signals are apart from each other. When it is for omega, it is apart from each other by twice pi. When it is f, then it is apart from each other by one. That means whatever the uh, frequency component you have in some, some places, let's say this is zero, you have something between 0 to 1, you have the same thing between 1 to 2 and 2 to 3, something like that. So it has the uh, replication. On other, on other node, we can also, also mention that if the spectrum, always we are putting this spectrum like this, uh, from 0 to half in the scale of small f or minus half, or in the scale of omega, we can represent from 0 to pi or minus pi. Why that is so? Why this spectrum is important, 0 to half? Because we have found that in the last class, we have represented that if we want to retrieve the signal back, that signal should be contained between 0 to half of f to retrieve the original signal back. What does it mean? You need at least two samples in a cycle. If you, if you have more samples, for example, 1 by 4, this is good. If you have 1 by 8, this is very good. If you have 1 by 800, that is excellent. So that means what is the maximum value you can afford or you can pursue to get back your original signal, and that is one by two, by the 
by by representing the diagram we have already represented this so if this is a pause signal we have represented this in time to time because this is very important if i have this one and this one this one and this one only then you can get back your original signal otherwise it is a probability that means uh, there of course you have the aliasing of the signal so if i if i draw the fact again in the frequency domain so i'm talking about f so what is the range of f so the range of f is zero to half or zero to minus half zero to minus half to get back your original signal if your signal from the analog domain xat to the digital domain discrete domain by having the sampling frequency you are having the discrete frequency that is like x n if the frequency of x n belongs to between 0 to 0 to twice pi sorry 0 to half then only you can go back to your x n to x a from the frequency point of view otherwise it is not possible and then you have the problem what is the problem and that problem is known as aliasing so if i if i build this kind of structure so zero to pi and it has the same thing let's say this is one so corresponding always try to try to figure out the omega that will help you help you zero pi this is twice pi and so on and so forth you'll have this is thrice pi thrice pi means this is 1.3 by 2 so 1.75 so <clears throat> whatever you have there i'm talking about this you have the same thing with the respect to one that means with respect to twice pi we have already mentioned that because after twice pi you have the same thing repeated we have mentioned it and they looks like the same so whatever you have there after twice pi means this point whatever you have this after twice pi means you have the same thing over there whatever you have this point you have the same thing after twice pi and so on and so forth so this is this is very simple to understand now if you have something inside this zero to zero to half zero to half that means you can come back to your original signal but if unfortunately if unfortunately so for example we have given the example in the last class if if the maximum frequency is equals to let's say uh, 16 kilohertz and you have processed it with the sampling frequency is 32 kilohertz then the maximum value 72 sir yes um this negative portion of frequency half in reality or in practical cases we do not have any negative frequencies the frequencies we are dealing with are all uh, positive values so what is this, what do you mean by this negative term okay uh Basically, these negative terms, you need to reconstruct the signal back. For example, uh, I have uh, given you that a cause signal or sine signal, like A cos omega t, can be represented as half e to the power minus j omega t and plus half e to the power plus e to the power plus j omega t or e to the power minus j omega t what does it mean this plus and minus that is a rotation it shows the rotation in the cartesian plane similarly if you want to uh, retrieve the signal back from the fourier domain to the uh, uh, to the time domain you have a negative frequency and this is just because of the mathematical purpose this is not having a physical uh, phenomena or the physical purposes However, just to make your idea clear, let me let me just draw it over over uh, this diagram. Let's say you have something 
I have already mentioned there, if you have something over this, okay, at this point, of course, you have the same replica after pi, uh, after twice pi, or after, in, in case of f, after 1. What does it mean by that? After, after this, you have the replica of that the signal. Similarly, that is not in the, in the forward senses, that is also in the backward as well. So you have the same signal over there with a negative value. So where, where is that frequency? Let's say this value is 0 0.2. Then you have the same value as 1.2. 1 1 you have the same value whenever you are just uh, uh, put back. You will have the same value before, before that. Before or after that you are having uh, having the same value conventionally when we are talking about the frequency in the negative side in the negative side that is only for the mathematical purpose mathematical means i have already mentioned mentioned it here let me choose another color uh, if i have some spectrum over this what is the location let's say this location is 0 0.7 then where do you find the repetition? You will find the repetition at 0 0.7 minus 1. That means at minus 0 0.3. So where is that minus 0 0.3? Let me, uh, let me just uh, put it here. So this is 0 0.3. Okay, somewhere else. If you have, this is minus 0 0.3. Now it will be again folded back and you can put that, okay, this is the place 0 0.3 positive. That means what is, what is the feelings? What, what is the actual things? Actual thing is 0 0.7 basically folded back to your 0 0.3. In the, other, uh, in the other way, from the theory, we can put that it is folded back to the minus 0 0.3. However, the, at the minus 0 0.3 doesn't have any existence. It is exactly the same thing as 0 0.3. You have exactly same thing at 0 0.3. If you can recall the things from your previous experience, I'm talking about uh, the negative frequency. Uh, in the frequency domain, in the uh, frequency domain, you are plotting your cost signal as, let's say, a cost signal A cos theta. It will be plotted in the frequency domain, in the frequency domain, as the height somewhere else. This is a frequency where uh, uh, where it can be written as a by two, and there is a at the negative one the same frequency. Let's this is a omega one and this is a minus omega one. You have a by two. If it is a a sine theta in that case what how, how we are representing that we are representing it this uh, positive and we have a negative direction and this is a by two and this is minus a by two at the at the negative frequency so this is uh, omega one and this is minus omega this presentation this presentations all are in the in the frequency domain due to the mathematical purposes. We'll show it when, whenever we'll uh, talk, talk about those things in the frequency domain, that means in the Fourier transform. Whenever we'll talk about the Fourier transform or we'll talk about the continuous time Fourier transform, then you will understand more what does it mean by the frequency represented in the negative uh, side. There is no physical existence, but you need those things to complete your equation. So you are from the time domain. You move to the frequency domain. Now you again need to come to the time domain. If you want to go back to your time domain, in the frequency domain, you have both positive frequency and negative frequency. Now, if you want to go back to your time domain again, if you just take only the positive frequencies, then you will find that you can't retrieve your time domain signal again. That's why you need to also concern your negative frequency. However, physically, negative frequency doesn't exist for the signals. 
like sound signals, we have the light signals and other signals. Okay, so that is a hypothetical things uh, of the of the signals. Okay, I, I believe that a part of the things I can uh, I can make you clear, but in future it will be more clear. What does it mean physically? Okay, sir, I understood. Okay, thank you. Another question, seventy nine. Sir, uh, sir, uh, why is the shape triangular here, sir? Um, okay. uh, they, those are those are actually uh, just to make you understand uh, that most of the cases, <clears throat> a signal. Whenever we are talking about a time signal, most of the energies are concentrated uh, between uh, very close to the DC value. So this presentation, this kind of triangular presentation is just to present that the lower value has a higher magnitude and the higher frequency component has lower magnitude. This is a convention. Most of the time, whenever we are, uh, we are plotting a time domain signal, conventional or classical time domain sequences, for example, sound signal, uh, light signals and other, other signals you have, most of the cases we found that the energy will concentrate on the uh, very close to the DC value. But I can I can also present it like this, or if you want to present it like this, okay, let me draw that minus half. If someone wants to present like that, okay, I'll present like this, the upside down. There is no harm, no problem with that. But what is the problem? You understand that the for, for understanding it looks difficult. Okay, so let me draw it like this. This is one, three by two. So in that case, what will happen? Okay, it will be like this. This is also fine, no problem. Whatever you have there, that will be replicated over this. That is, that is the concern. So I believe that whenever people are putting this kind of triangle, it looks very nice to represent. You can also represent it by this kind of uh, square wave, even no problem. If I put it like this, in future I will do that. Then I need another color, definitely. Okay. So otherwise, if I put in the in the same red color, it looks very odd. That's why people used to make it like this. Okay. No problem if you can choose any other shape. Let's say if I if I put a shape like this, yes, I can do that. You can do that. So this this actually shows that at the location of DC you have higher strength, and whenever you are going to the high frequency, the strength is low. Conventionally, this is true, but not necessarily that is true. You can also draw it in other fashion, and there is no harm. If somebody draws like this, okay. Yes, you can draw that. No problem. If I if I draw it this, yes, you can draw it. No problem. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Yes, I, I always expect some question. Uh, if I can answer, I will answer straightforward. If I need some time to investigate, then I'll give you the answer later on. So if you have no other question at this point, uh, so we can continue again. Oh, F max, because this is a max. F max is equals to half, which represent this half value. All other samples, let's say frequency F1 is equals to, let's say uh, eight kilohertz, Definitely, it will be processed with the same sampling frequency, 32 kilohertz, and you will find the F, small f1, is equals to 8 by 32, which is definitely less than, less than half. So that means somewhere else, uh, between, somewhere else between 0 and half, so somewhere else, uh, uh, so it is equals to 1 by 4, so it is, belongs to this. Since that is less than half, that means it has, what, what does it mean? It has four samples for a full cycle, 
that means you can retrieve back your original signal okay fine now if for some reason the sampling frequency is like uh, let's say 40 40 kilohertz oh uh, sorry i should make a little bit lower let's say 20 kilohertz if the sampling frequency is now 20 kilohertz then what what is the maximum small f is equals to 16 kilohertz divided by 20 kilohertz so what does it mean so we'll have uh eight uh, uh So four by divided by five. Four divided by five. So it's a very close to one. Whatever, whatever the value, it's very close to one. So zero point eight, sir. Okay, zero point one eight. So thank you. So let's say that is this point zero point eight. So that is the maximum one. What is the minimum one? Of course, that will always start with zero. Now. What is the spectrum? So the spectrum should be looks like this. Please consider this. Okay. So the spectrum should be looks like this. If this is the spectrum, what will happen? This point, that means this is, you have already mentioned that this is 0 0.8, where it should be folded back from the last class. Can you find out where it should be folded back? Have you, have you gone through the last lecture? We, we, we know that the ifs, when we are talking about point two. all if they are separated by one. So whether you can, you can, Yes, I got your answer, point two, isn't it? Who has given the answer, point two? Yes, sir. I yes, know. yes, yes. Just follow that, yes. Your answer is correct. Jump to one in the positive direction or in the negative direction, before or after. You have the same thing. So we can, we can write in this way, 0 0.8 minus one. So before one. Or in the omega spectrum, you can find before we have write it like this. Let's say omega zero is equals to omega one minus twice pi. That means before twice pi. Since we are calculating the value of f, so then we can write this equation. What is the value then? F is equals to minus zero point two. Where is that value? Minus zero point two. This is a negative negative value. So let's say that is very close to there. Uh, this is 0 0.5. So this is 0 0.25. So somewhere else here. So uh, let me let me uh, take another color. So this is the point. This is minus 0 0.2. Which one is replaced over there? So this 0 0.8, the signal that is replaced to this point. And these points, so what is the strength? What is the strength of this? Okay, so this is the strength. So let's say that is the strength of this point. Now, I have already mentioned that the minus 0 0.2 is equivalent to plus 0 0.2. Let's say this is the plus 0 0.2. I'll, I'll just erase this. Okay. okay. So this is a plus 0 0.2. So this point will get the value. This is 0 0.2. Now this 0 0.8 is equivalent to 0 0.2. I believe that you, you got the point very clear. So this is the point. Now I'll, I'll mark it with another color. So this, this point. Now what about this point? Let's say if this is 0 0.7, if this is 0 0.7, that point, should be marked where? Minus 0 0.3, sir. Minus 0.3, then you can get it to the positive 0 0.3. Yes, you are correct. Isn't it? 
So that is at this point. So you can you can see very closely and clearly that whenever you are proceeding to the left, you are proceeding to the left, it is also proceeding to the right. So that means the 0 0.8, let me uh, let me draw it in different way. Okay. So those are the values. Okay. If this is a 0 0.8, that is folded back over there. For 0 0.7, that is folded back over there. If this is like 0 0.6, it will be folded back 0 0.4. So that means this line, whatever I have written like this, it will be generated like that. And this whole part, this whole part means if I if I made a line over there, okay. First of all, made a line, and then this is the color. Okay, so draw it accordingly. Okay. Now this part. So this is this portion actually give you which value? Half. So if you if your sampling frequency push your value of f is more than half if that is more than half then this portion try to try to consider this this portion is folded back folded back to this portion so the red portion is fully folded back to the green portion and this is definitely known as the aliasing. That means the frequency looks like 0 0.8 now is equivalent to 0 0.2. The frequency looks like in the discrete domain 0 0.7 is looks like 0 0.3, 0 0.6 looks like 0 0.4, so on and so forth. So that all the components after after 0 0.5, all the components after 0 0.5 will fold it back folded back inside 0 to 0 0.5. They are folded back. So <clears throat> what is the problem here? So there are two problems. One problem is that discrete frequencies more than 0 0.5. That means 0 0.6, 0 0.7 components, 0 0.8 components. You can't find those signal again because they will, they, they are converted to another signal due to the aliasing effect. They have been converted to another signal. So uh, how does actually been done? I have, I have shown it for several times just to recap the things. Let's draw one, one diagram. So what does it mean? So if I have this kind of signal and I have the samples, uh, let's say this, this, this and so on and so forth, maybe somewhere else. So then whatever, what, how the signal looks like, the signal looks like this. So due to, due to this position of the low sampling rate, I have started with, I have started with the higher signal, F1, but I have found a lower signal, F2. Due to what? Due to the value of Fs. The example is, I have started with 0 0.8, and I have come up with the frequency 0 0.2. This 0 0.8 represents the analog signal F1, the 0 0.2 represents the analog signal F2. In the last class, <coughs> I have shown that how to find these analog signals if you know the value of small f. The small f's are given and fs, you, you must know the value of fs 
then you can find the value of capital F. That means the original signal. So this is this is the whole story. Do you have any question at this point or any confusion? So this is this is number one problem. What is the problem? That means you actually lost the frequency F1. You have lost it. That is the problem number one. And it actually been shown like the frequency as F2. Can anybody tell me what is the problem number two? There is another problem. Okay, here, according to this example, the highest frequency, highest frequency is like uh, we have F is equals to 0 0.8, which state that, okay, that is, let, let that, that is F1. So you have lost F1. So in the original signal, in the original signal, do you have the value of F2 previously? Because the spectrum is from 0 to 0 0.8. In a common sense, do you have the F2 spectrum in your original signal? Anyone would like to answer? If you want to guess something, it's also fine. So I didn't understand it properly. Let me draw, draw the things. Then could you please repeat? I couldn't understand it properly. How what do you mean by if we got the signals? Uh, you can't understand what what we what I'm meaning by F two. Sir, I didn't understand what you meant by F two in the original signal, sir. Uh, I. I I have already mentioned that, okay, you have a higher frequency from this diagram, F1. The F1, now F1 is the original frequency due to the lower, so lower sampling rate, of course, it will be plotted after, after the small f is greater than equal, greater than, greater than half, okay, F1. Originally, it will be there. Due to the lower sampling rate, you will get another signal that is looks like F2, which is less than the F1 value. Now, I was asking that whether previously you already have another signal called F2 in your signal because you have a band of the signal. What is a band of the signal? From 0 hertz to the maximum F1. Let's say 0 hertz to maximum F1. Now, due to the lower sampling rate, you got this F1 is equivalent to F2. So, whether F2 is less than F1 or higher than F1? F2 is less than F1 or higher than F1? So, less than F1. Less than F1. So, then uh, can't you say that, okay, we already have F2 signal in our, uh, in our original signal? Isn't it? We have the lower frequency previously, and now the higher frequency is also converted to the lower frequency. That's why I'm asking whether we already have the F2 in our original signal band. The answer is yes, we, we already have that. Okay, please, please, uh, please uh, proceed on this uh, video, you'll get the answer. you will find it. So this is the scale of frequency. Frequency means capital F. What is the spectrum? That is from 0 to F1 because F1 is your maximum frequency. The spectrum is actually like this. It actually starts from 0 to F1. Yes, Saifullah, 90. 90. Uh, 0.2 is present, sir. Yes. So in common sense, because 0 0.2 is less than, sorry, sorry, F2 is, F2 is less than F1. So, of course, the, this is the, let's say, let's say this is the position of F2. F2 was present in your original signal. Let's say what was the original signal frequency let that F2 is equals to, let's say, uh, 
5 kilohertz. Previously, you have the 5 kilohertz signal. So, I am talking about what is the second problem. The first problem is what? Someone, could, could, could you please mention what is the first problem due to the aliasing? What is the first problem of the aliasing? Yes, 132. Sir, uh, frequency F1 is lost. We get F0. Yeah, that means the higher frequency, which has been represented in the frequency domain as more than half, all the frequencies are replaced by another frequency. So this is number one problem. That means you lost the frequency. What could be the second one? Can you guess? Okay, so let me uh, give you the, okay, yeah, it's 90. Uh, we cannot uh, reconstruct or regain the original signal and it looks like F2. I can get your answer in the last part. And it looks like F2, the 0 0.2 instead of 0 0.8. Yeah, that is, that is the aliasing effect. So now what is the, what is the other other problem. The other problem is just uh, try to understand, let's say, how your F2 looks like. Let's say the frequency is F2, okay, uh, whatever the frequency, I have mentioned that, okay, this is a 5 kilohertz. And the, the signal is not all about only the frequency. You, you also have some strength. That means the magnitude. Let's say for F1, we have A1 is the magnitude. This is the original one. This is from where? This is from original, original, sorry, original F1. Now, what about, what about another F1? That is due to the aliasing, due to the aliasing, you have another F1, which is also 5 kilohertz. Maybe it, it actually came from a higher frequency. That is actually came from the F2. They are folded back and they have also generated 5 kilohertz. What is the strength of that? Maybe the strength of this is lower than the original F1. Okay, so let me draw it. So the frequency is the same. So the strength is low. Frequency is same, but strength is low. So I, I should I should write it. This is F one prime. The frequency is F one, but the amplitude is different from F one. So that's why I can write A one prime. Now what is the total value now? How the F one looks like? It should be looks like not the frequency, the amplitude, the total amplitude now. The A is equals to A1 plus A1 prime for each and every point. So that means for each and every point, for, for this maximum point, they will add together and that will give a higher value. For the lower value, that will uh, give some higher value. That will give some higher value, higher value, something like this, something like this, and this. So that means the signal now, the signal of F1, the frequency is again, I'm talking about the frequency. Yes, the frequency will remain the same. Okay, the 5 kilohertz. One came from the original one and one came from the LES signal. But since they are the same frequency, they will add up with their amplitude. And now you've got a new amplitude which can be represented as capital A. Do you, don't you believe that this is a problem for the signal? Yes, 132. Sir, uh, is the two signals uh, between the 0 0.2 to 0 0.5 range, uh, the F1 and F1 prime? Uh, F1 and F1 prime. Yeah, of course, they are between 
the f1 or f1 prime they are the same frequency why i'm putting f1 and f1 prime because they have the same frequency but different amplitude let's say they have the different amplitude or even though they have the same amplitude they will be added together and they will generate a new f1 with the same frequency the frequency means they will be between 0 to 0 to half in the frequency uh, discrete frequency domain but in the actual frequency domain that is between 0 to maximum what was the maximum value i i, I just write max this is the position of your f1 now the previously the strength of this signal was like this okay i should i should draw it like with the with the color component previously the strength was like this red one now the strength of the aliasing frequency will add it with that and the total strength is now the blue one so you have some higher strength so this is now the strength of f1 which actually changes the frequency itself 132 you got the point yes sir so uh, still could you uh, please say where does the f1 prime come from in short the f1 prime that means it actually came from the alias signal in the in the last diagram i have shown that okay due to due to the due to the let's say i have already mentioned the pause signal if this is a higher frequency i have i have mentioned it's like f2 and uh, due to the lower sampling rate lower sampling rate or, or okay so i have drawn it for several times lower sampling rate you have some other other frequency and this is your f1 f1 prime let's say f1 prime so f2 is sampled with fs due to due to the lower value of fs or you can say the combination is more than half this is more than half more than half means this is according to the nyquist theorem that is beyond the beyond the original signals and this is the value where this is f2 and now this f2 is folded back and this is the position of f1 prime that is exactly the f1 frequency in your original spectrum so previously you have your original signal and now you have the same frequency again and this is the alias of the signal of f2 the f1 prime or f1 is the alias of the signal of f2 132 yes sir understood thank you sir okay now i i believe that you can understand that there are two problems one problem is you can't retrieve your original signal f2 that is vanished and convert it to the value of f1 and since there was the original signal in the original signal you have f1 previously now another f1 signal added over there and of course the amplitude is not zero there would be some value and they are added together so previously if that was a1 and now this is a1 prime that will add it together and they are making a let's say small a1 so now you have another amplitude so that makes so many problems so now if i if i draw the spectrum again for the understanding this is minus half this is plus half this is one this is three by two so the spectrum is like this if there is no aliasing but if the aliasing how the aliasing will done if the maximum value of f is more than half that makes a problem in that case it will be folded back to your region and that will be like this and now you can understand that this portion that means this portion is actually folded back from the aliasing part aliasing part okay now you you can find that this is the maximum value it is folded to this point 
So now I would like to make you clear that for this spectrum, the, the diagram of this spectrum from zero to, let's say this is 0 0.2, from zero to 0 0.2, you have all the signal actual. You have all the signal actual value. But after from 0 0.2 to 0 0.5, what happens? Can anyone describe what happens from 0 to 0 0.2 to 0 0.5? Yes, 132. Uh, the two signals add up together. It probably will become a flat line from uh, 0 0.2 to 0 0.5. Not, not, not a flat line because you do not know. Okay, so what, what we can expect that? Okay, you are, you are telling that I'm, I'm, I'm representing the strength with this kind of line. Don't, don't think that this is the uh, actual value. It actually shows that from 0 0.2 to 0 0.5, all the signals you have already mentioned it correctly. 0 0.2 to 0 0.5, all the signals are folded back due to the aliasing from the original signal, higher frequency folded back to the lower frequency, they have their strength and previously the original signal, they also have their strength. Now those, those two strengths are added together. So that means it actually changes the whole bunch of signal. So this area, this area actually suffers for, for uh, new amplitude they have incorporated new amplitude so they are not the actual amplitudes so they are suffering for not for frequency component they are suffering for the amplitude components so they are they are suffering for that so for this one that means from 0 to 0 0.2 they are the actual and they are suffering so from 0 0.2 to 0 0.5 they are suffering for the amplitude amplitude problem and from 0 0.5 to let's say 0 0.8 0 0.5 to 0 0.8 so what is the, how they are how they are suffer they are lost they are they are lost their original signal from the both magnitude and the frequency point of view so they have lost everything because they have no trace. So at least from this diagram, you should understand the things. The first portion from 0, 0.0 to 0 0.2, they have all actual from 0 0.2 to half. They have the problem with magnitude or amplitude from 0 0.5 to 0 0.8. They have all sort of problem because they lost their signal. Is that fine? I believe that is okay. Now, if I ask you, what is the range of F to retrieve the signal back? Of course, the F should be less than half, or you can say equal. So that is okay, or greater than or equal or minus half. That is the range of F. I believe you understand the things. Why? Because minimum you need two samples otherwise you can't retrieve the original signal back similarly if i talk about omega omega should be less than equals to pi or greater than equals to minus pi so that is the range of omega to retrieve your original original signal back similarly <clears throat> we can say what is the range of analog frequency is less than infinity, less than infinity, or greater than minus infinity. So that is the range of F. What is the range of omega, capital omega? You can say that that is also from the infinity, plus infinity to minus infinity. Now you can see that a range of frequency from minus infinity to plus infinity can be converged to minus half to plus half just by introducing the sampling frequency fs and that is why those f and omega are known as the relative frequency they are related to the value of we have already established that the small f is nothing but 
f over fs and omega is equals to twice pi f over fs this is in radian so those are the relations are very important okay okay so at this moment if you have any sort of confusion please let me know and this is your work uh, in your uh, next assignment that means in the class lecture please answer this with proper diagram okay so this is this is your question number one is given given that the the frequency of a signal spectrum so x a t the frequency range is from 0 to let's say 30 kilohertz this is the frequency actual frequency the you have chosen the f s is equals to 40 kilohertz now you need to you need to find out few things number one you need to find out what is the range of frequency what is the range of you need to write what is the range of frequency for which you don't have any kind of aliasing effect there is no impact of the aliasing effect what is the range of the frequency for those you don't have any sort of aliasing effect from the diagram point of view i have mentioned in the previous diagram this is the range where you don't have any sort of aliasing effect so that is the question you have the range of the frequency you have the sampling frequency now you need to find out what is the range of the actual frequency for which you don't have any sort of impact of the aliasing. Okay. I believe the question is much clear to you. Okay. Now the thing is how you can protect the aliasing in the signal. Okay. There are, there are two possible yes uh, 12 range of frequency means sir the relative frequency no i am talking about the actual frequency though you need to go back and forth first you need to find the relative frequency then from the relative frequency you can come back to your original frequency is that is that fine yes. 12 yes sir okay so your friend is asking about whether I'm asking about relative frequency. No, I'm asking about the original frequency. But you need to find the relative frequency first and from there you need to come back to the original frequency. Okay. So show the detailed calculation and as well as the diagram. Okay, detailed calculation and the diagram as well <clears throat> in your assignment. Uh, probably this is the fifth lecture. So fifth assignment uh, should be written like that. Uh, with this answer okay i have i have uh okay so what i am uh what i was talking about like okay so how to protect the aliasing there are the two things okay so from the diagram what you can say if unfortunately we have the aliasing due to the lower sampling rate what we can do we can higher the sampling value, isn't it? If we can make higher sampling rate so that the maximum value, MAX, the analog maximum value, if this is the FS is equals to twice of F max, then what happened? The F is equals to, it should be FS, capital FS, the small F max would be f max yes i i was asking about the the issue uh, on on the issue of uh, aliasing so how to tackle the aliasing things aliasing uh, problems so as 
Okay, so let me take the annotation tools. Okay, so with our 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 uh, maximum range of small f or relative frequency is half. So if the spectrum goes beyond the value of half, so that means it is more than half. Let's take some value <coughs> if it help us. So let's say it is 0 0.8 and this is 0 0.5. So what we need to do, we need to squeeze the thing. We need to squeeze the thing so that everything will be inside, inside half. That is our target. So how to do that? We need to, we need to increase the value of Fs more and more so that the F max, the F max should be less than less than or equals to half that is our target so how to find the value of f max definitely you need to know about the actual frequency maximum value <coughs> so from research let's say for the voice signal this is very good example from the voice signal what is the range of the frequency we have mentioned it like 0 to 20 kilohertz Okay, 0 to 20 kilohertz. Then what happens? Uh, if I choose the sampling frequency is uh, 20 kilohertz. If I choose the sampling frequency is equals to 20 kilohertz, then this is the maximum one. This is F max. So small f max would be is equals to 20 divided by 20 is equals to 1. So that means the spectrum will extend up to 0 to 1. However, we are targeting half. So what should be the value of Fs? The value of Fs should be increased more and more to tackle the aliasing signal. And we select that, okay, it should be twice of the maximum frequency and that is nothing but 40 kilohertz. If we move to the 40 kilohertz, then certainly we can find that the spectrum will squeeze and that will goes from zero to half. Of course, that is also extendable in the left side all, all, the, all the way. So this is one and this is minus half minus one. Okay. So th this is one thing that means you can change your sampling frequency and you can counterbalance uh, the aliasing effect. So what you need to know by the research of your input signal if this is a voice signal voice signal then you need to know what is the range of the signal so 0 to 20 kilohertz now the thing is the people people already understand that the frequency for the voice signal 0 to 4 kilohertz is 4 kilohertz are the most important signal from 4 kilohertz, I should write 4 kilohertz, kilohertz to 20 kilohertz, you don't have enough information. If you want to take all the signals, then what you need, you need a 40 kilohertz. Apart from that, if we do something like this, let's say you are in the analog domain. You are in the analog domain, so I'm talking about F. What is the frequency spectrum? 0 to 20 kilohertz. And let's say this is uh, 4 kilohertz. And the spectrum is like this. Try to follow me like this. Okay. This is a very hypothetical thing I'm talking about. So here, up to 4 kilohertz, you have all the necessary information. From the 4 kilohertz to 20 kilohertz, you can neglect this. Then what we can do? we can uh, put a low pass filter we can put a low pass filter like this we'll talk about filter after after the uh, need inshallah during the final and as well as in the next semester if you conduct uh, if you join with the course the digital filter design we have uh, much more investigation on the on the filters okay whatever the things so we are putting a low pass filter where the cutoff, the cutoff is 4 kilohertz. Now, after having, putting this 
4 kilohertz cutoff. So how the signal now looks like? The signal looks like as follows. I'm choosing the right. Now the spectrum would cover only 4 kilohertz signals and it actually cut out from 4 to 20 kilohertz. So spectrum uh, might be looks like this. Okay. So this is the voice signal. Now, what could be your sampling frequency? Could you please mention what could be your sampling frequency? Sir, Just 8 kilohertz. Um, uh, 8 kilohertz or more? Yeah. Very good. 8 kilohertz at least or more than 8 kilohertz. Yes, thank you for your uh, response. Okay, for, for voice signal processing, most of the cases, even though we are taking 4 kilohertz signal, we mostly use 16 or 32 kilohertz for the sampling. So you'll, you'll find it, the 16 uh, kilohertz or 32 kilohertz. If you, if you process with 8 kilohertz, if you process with 16 kilohertz, or if you process with 32 kilohertz, uh, you can find that the output would be different than one an another. Okay, and uh, practically you can do it with, with an analog signal. So whatever, whatever the case, don't think about other frequency, at least you need of 8 kilohertz. Previously, if you consider the whole signal up to 20 kilohertz, you need the sampling frequency is equals to at least a 40 kilohertz. So which one you, you will prefer and why? So I, I'll describe, discuss the thing. Now the thing is, which one do you prefer and why? Conventionally, I would like to prefer the second one. In that case, we have lower sampling rate. If the sampling rate is higher, what is the problem? You can note it down. This is very important. Higher sampling rate makes higher power consumption in, in your circuit. Higher sampling rate actually increase the data value, storage value of your computer. So it has two basic problems that makes the circuit complex, the storage maximum and maximize the storing capacity, uh, capacity, you need to extend the capacity. That is also bad thing. And also the power consumption. Why the power consumption is higher? 40 kilohertz means per second. In one second, your switch will be on and off for 40 kilo time. So 40,000 40, times. 8 kilohertz means in one second, it will be switched on and off for 8,000 times. So which one is better for you? Definitely the second one. So I should go, I should, uh, I will prefer the second one. So what is the uh, flow diagram then? You have your XAT, your voice signal, put it to a low pass filter. After that, what is the maximum frequency at that moment? At that moment, the maximum frequency is four kilohertz because at the low pass filter, you have chosen that the cutoff frequency, the cutoff frequency, let's say FC, the cutoff frequency is equals to four kilohertz. You have already chosen that. That's why this is the F max. You know that what is the X max. Then you need to put it to the analog to digital converter with a sampling frequency of sampling frequency of eight kilohertz. I believe that is that is clear to you. So practically we have done it and this is for sure that always a analog signal, when you are talking about any sort of analog signal, they have the tail. Tail means they have some maximum frequency, which is not very ex expected, which is not very expected. That means you have the, the frequency spectrum like this, you have very long tail. So that means you have your, all the signals in between, let's say from zero to two kilohertz, but you have a very higher spectrum from zero to 100 kilohertz, which is not expected. Now, if you uh, use a sampling frequency is equals to four kilohertz, 
then what what is the problem all the signals after two kilohertz they will fold it back they will fold it back within your own signal and destroy your actual signal that's why what we need to do we need to introduce this low pass filter first always and that's why you will find that in your digital signal processor always there should be this is a must there is a low pass filter to know about what is the maximum frequency that will give you the strength to select your sampling frequency okay so i will choose this this architecture okay okay now if that is a conventional audio signal then we are going to choose like this but if that is a sound signal which uh, has some music as well if you have the music that music is not contained up to the four kilohertz it may have higher frequency content it might have that you need zero to even 30 30 kilohertz for different instrument has different music frequency or build some frequency that if this is from zero to 30 kilohertz then of course you need a 60 kilohertz signal and that's why when you have recorded the voice you can find that the data or the storage you need is very much lesser than the music you have stored if you have a good quality music to be stored you need lot more data due to this higher sampling value is that is that clear to you are you with me yes 130 any any confusion up to now so uh, what is what is the uh, essence to introduce a low pass filter after after putting it to the analog to digital converter why it is necessary to limit the maximum frequency of the analog otherwise there is always the possibility that there are some higher frequency and those higher frequency will fold it back to your original frequency and that will uh, destroy your actual frequency and you will find some other noises over there okay so i believe that uh, during your lab session you will have some some experiment on on the sound signal so that you can understand the fact very easily okay okay let me let me go to the <coughs> uh, lecture uh, original lecture materials of course those are also very necessary i have also already gone through this uh, before and here it is mentioned uh, about the range of f i have talked about this so I have covered many things by those diagrams. So at the end, it is mentioned that what is the range of the omega and the f, that is the characteristics of the second one. Uh, here, these diagrams are taken from the source, is source is given, and that those shows the aliasing effect. So the, the green one shows, uh, green one shows uh, the original frequency due to the uh, small sampling red it shows what is the alias signal looks like uh, you are increasing the sampling frequency still it is a alias signal with a lower frequency at least we need uh, how many samples we need two samples it's shown here at least we need two samples uh, to 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 generate your original signal back Okay, and that is the third uh, characteristic, the highest rate of oscillation in a discrete time sinusoid is attained when omega is equals to pi, or you can say equivalent to f is equals to half. Of course, that is the highest frequency, because if you consider the pause signal, where the highest rate will attain when that is half f is equal to half if we put some other samples over there definitely the rate will be lower than the previous one the frequency will be lower 
So if we have two samples per cycles, then it is half. If we have four samples per cycles, then it is one by four. That is, it will be downgraded. So when you are getting the maximum uh, oscillation, definitely at the location of f is equals to half. We have already mentioned it. And the diagrams are given here. So I'll, I'll supply this PDF file to you as well to copy this last, last section because you need to submit the lecture notes. So please copy this. It is actually shown all the facts. This is for omega equals to pi by eight. So that means f is equals to one by, uh, pi by four is equals to one by eight. So f is equals to one by four. This is f is equals to one by two, which actually give the highest oscillation. And this shows the DC value, shows the DC value. Okay, sampling of analog signal, very simple. And we have already established this, this one. What is the relation between small t and the fs and the sampling, uh, sampling uh, sample points in small n? Uh, we have also made this relation. I have al uh, also done this. The relation between small f, capital F, and fs, and we have also shown it uh, today. So I have, I have actually covered all those things uh, previously by this lecture. Okay, so please go through this. And <clears throat> I will, uh, these are the examples from the books for Krias. I have, uh, so please uh, buy the book and uh, try to solve it. Those are the examples, no need to solve it, just go through that and try to understand each and every part of that. So this is another example I have given, so I'll supply it. And if you face any problem for understanding, uh, then we, we can discuss in the next class. This is a diagram similar to the, uh, the sampling frequency and the, uh, sorry, aliasing effect. As you can see that the red line shows a higher frequency where uh, this is a value, F1, and the alias frequency is this one, which is a, a lower value, the seven times higher. F1 is seven times higher than F2. So F2 is the alias frequency of F1. So I have given that example both in the magnitude and also in the frequency domain. So I have drawn this kind of diagram for several times. So I believe that you can understand uh, the facts. Still, if you have any uh, problem, then we'll discuss it. Sampling theorem. So the page number are given. So please go through that. Uh, how to select the sampling period or the sampling frequency. I believe that you understand this. You need to know about the maximum analog frequency. Then you need to move to the sampling frequency. Why do we need the low pass filter uh, before the sampler? Because to find out the maximum analog frequency. Otherwise, you can select what should be the appropriate sampling frequency. If you do not know what is the maximum frequency you have, how do you know that? By putting a low pass filter, uh, you, you, you have uh, that control over your circuit or your design. The quantization, the page number are given, those are the, 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 uh, Okay, the homework, the quantization. So up to now, you have the syllabus for the first quiz. So just after the Eid vacations, we'll have the first quiz, inshallah. So hope you all the best. And Eid Mubarak during this Ramadan. So please pray for each other, inshallah. For a better future without Corona. So, so that we, we can we can control the the whole world. The nature can control the corona. Inshallah. Okay. Thank you for your participation. <clears throat> okay. So that is the end of this today's session. If you have any question, we can address it now. Okay. So again, this is very important. So what we have covered. These are the 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 core part of dsp if you can understand this uh, very clearly in practical senses uh, for the implementation it will be very hard for for the futures 
uh, f future topics uh, for the DSP because uh, you may learn a lot of things, a lot of terms and other things, but you will not be very uh, like uh, comfortable with those terms uh, if you can't understand those topics I have already uh, given to you. Uh, I have uh, taken much time to describe the fundamental things. Whenever the applications will come, th then I will uh, make it very faster. So you need to understand those these parts, what I have already mentioned to you or, or discussed uh, through these first three, three weeks. You need to understand it very clearly. So I hope and believe that you, you have that uh, understanding after the uh, uh, lectures. Uh, if you don't if you still have some problem, please go through the video lectures uh, since I, will, I have uploaded all those lectures. Um, so it, it actually gives you some uh, some benefit, inshallah. So hope you hope you all the best. I will not take your attendance. I will count it as all are present today. Okay, so enjoy your time. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Wa alaikum, assalam. Yes. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Wa alaikum.